learning how to interpret slope and intercepts. And by intercepts, I mean both x and y. x and y intercepts. First, slope. Well, from previously, we know that slope is a rate of change. And what I mean by that it is it is a change in y per a change in x. This triangle is the Greek letter delta and it stands for change in. When you do the interpreting, you need to think y per x. Y per x, for example, Let's say that we are um, driving somewhere. Well, our input quantity would be time, perhaps, measured in hours. And our output quantity would be miles. Our independent or dependent. The miles we travel depends upon the hours we drive. Let's say um, in three hours, um, we traveled 150 miles. Um, by hour six, we traveled, say, 300 miles. All right. With these two points, we could calculate our slope. Well, one way we learned to find slope was to take the points. In this case, we have three pairs with 150 and six pairs with 300 and use our slope formula. The slope formula said that slope is equal to change in y divided by change in x. Change in y per change in x. Well, change means to subtract. We subtract some y's. And we divide it by the x's subtracted. In this case, subtracting the y's. We could subtract 150 minus 300 or 300 minus 150. The order doesn't matter provided we do the same order for each one. So, I'm going to do 300 minus 150. Divide by the change in the x's. Since I did 300 minus 150, I should do 6 minus 3. Well, 300 minus 150 is 150. 6 minus 3 is 3. 150, minus, 150 divided by 3 is 50. But the question is, what is this unit? When we say interpret, we mean in context with words. In words, what does this 50 represent? Well, you think y per x. What is our y quantity? Miles. What is our x quantity? Hours. So this 50 is miles per hour. In fact, we might say it like this, 50 mph. When we talk about our speed, we often say that. It's our driving rate. In this situation, we are averaging 50 miles per hour. Okay, now let's use that information to see if we can answer number one from our packet. We're looking at page 57, problem number one. I get to the question sentence first. Which of the following best describes the slope of the line segment? Well, when we're asked to identify the slope, I'm first going to identify my x and y quantities. x, in this case, is ours. x is ours. y, in this case, is the money earned, my dollars. All right, so I'm simply going to fill in y per x. My y quantity, y is dollars money earned per my x quantity in this case is hours my slope here is dollars per hour I would say it's my pay rate this is my slope this is the unit of my slope now it's asking me to actually 
calculate that. You can see all the problems say dollars per hour, dollars per hour, dollars per hour. So knowing the unit is not exactly going to get it for us in this case. We need to find the actual value. Well, we need two points. Let's see if we can identify a couple of points on this line. It appears as though 8 pairs with 50. 8 pairs with 50. And it appears that 16 pairs with 100. The line is a little bit ambiguous, so if you see slightly different numbers, that may potentially lead you to a different answer in this case. But let's use the uh, the values that I'm getting here. So I will calculate my slope. Change in Y over change in X. Change in Y, 100 minus 50. Change in X, since I did 100 minus 50, I should do 16 minus 8. 100 minus 50 is 50. 16 minus 8 is 8. I have 50 divide 8 using the calculator. Fifty divide eight. That is six point two five. So the person's pay rate is six dollars and twenty five cents, slightly less than minimum wage. This must question must be from a while ago. All right, that's how we calculate and interpret slope. Next. Interpret intercepts. Okay. First, the intercepts. The intercepts are the points where the line crosses the X and Y axis. Okay. At the intercepts, one coordinate will B zero. All right, let's take a look at an example. X, Y. <clears throat> let's say in the X column we have negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. <clears throat> and in the Y column, we have 3, 2, 1, and 0. <clears throat> well, to find the intercepts, you simply identify the zeros. This is an intercept, and this is an intercept. Well, which one is it? Well, look at the non-zero entry. This is going to be the y-intercept because we did not move any left or right. Therefore, this point will lie on the y-axis. Zero, two is the y-intercept. For zero, well, zero is the y, so we did not move up or down any. Therefore, this point will lie on the x-axis. This is the x-intercept. When we're interpreting these, we simply read the point like we see it. Um, for instance, in this case, let's say that we were dealing with some kind of experiment here. Perhaps the X quantity is temperature. And the Y quantity is bacteria present. 
Okay, so it appears is as though as we're getting warmer, there is less bacteria. There's some kind of negative relationship here. One gets larger, the other gets smaller. Interpreting the y-intercept, this point zero two, it's saying when the temperature is zero, the number of bacteria is two, and that's all that I will say here. When the temp is zero, maybe it's degrees Celsius, degrees Celsius, zero degrees Celsius, the number of bacteria is two. So all I've done is attach the numbers to the quantities. Now we will try the x-intercept in this direction. Our x-intercept is four zero. All right. So this four zero, four is the temperature, zero is the bacteria. I would say when the temperature is four degrees Celsius, the number of bacteria is zero. So interpreting the intercepts is not too difficult a situation. We simply attach the words to the quantities using the ordered pair. Let's apply that to one of our questions. Okay, problem number two. The question sentence says, which of the following best describes the y-intercept? Well, first identify the y-intercept. Here's the y-axis, here's the line, this is the y-intercept. It is the point 0, 16. Well, 0 is our x, that's the hours. 16 is the y, that's the height in inches. It says, the graph shows the height of a candle as it burns. It makes sense that this would be a negative slope. As the time goes on, the height of the candle decreases. The candle shrinks in height as we're burning it. So what does this 0, 16 mean? Well, when the time is 0 hours, the height of the candle is 16 inches. Before we started burning it, it was 16 inches tall, and it progressively gets shorter. So this point here represents the beginning. And that's often the case. <clears throat> when the y-intercept, pardon me, when the x variable is time, the y-intercept is often the beginning. So, F says, the height of the candle before it burned was 16 inches. You can see this 16 is the inches. And a time of 0 is before it burned. Number 2, the correct answer is F.